If you're watching trailers on YouTube, you probably noticed this. Or this. You are an infinite. I know, it's ridiculous. It's trailer for a trailer. And uh, that doesn't exist in a cinema when you watch ads before the movie. So why does it exist online? This story is much more complicated than it might seem at the first glance. It is a story about our complex economies, digital life, the evolution in our brain and the dark paths of our future. But before we do all this, I want you to help me with a little experiment. If you're watching this on your phone, please mark the time in this video when you received your first notification or when your attention jumped to something else on your phone and you switched the apps. If you're watching this on your computer or other device, mark the time where your attention actually jumped from this video to your phone if you checked your notification or anything else that kind of drew your attention. Please write it in comments down below and let's compare it together. So why are we doing all this? Well, if you're new to this channel, my name is Vladislav Radak and this is Fabric of Life, a show where we try to fuse art and science to answer the world's most compelling questions. We use everything, from great movies to breakthrough science, from classical paintings to complex game theory, to dig deeper into what it means to be human in 21st century and the future. So let me take you on one... Sorry. On one subconscious adventure. Jason Bourne takes off his jacket, punches man unconscious, looks miserably off camera and then title card appears. The ad, 5 seconds of action, is a teaser for full Jason Bourne trailer which immediately follows the teaser. Strange, since you are more confused and startled than impressed by this. You have no idea what movie is about, but it's not about you, it's about machines that run our world and our subconsciousness. It's not a secret. The attention economy that is designing our world that you and me live in ruined our ability to focus. And then our focus span became shorter and shorter. This is why movie studios are worried that you will not have the patience to sit through more than two minutes of trailer, so they will try to hook you up with the five seconds of explosions. And this is unfortunately the problem that is just getting its momentum. Human attention span has now dropped to just eight seconds, down from 12 seconds in 2000. In just two decades, our attention span has fallen to one second lower than the notoriously ill-focused goldfish. But how did we really get here? To investigate that, we need to go to the very beginnings of our civilization. For most of human history, the big economic scarcity in the world was land. Scarcity of arable land caused hunger, inequality, massive wars and famine. Humans were focused for months, if not years, to cultivate the land that will extend our race. Eventually, when industrial revolution hit, uh, the primary scarcity was not longer land because machines could cultivate more than enough land to feed everybody. In that moment, the biggest scarcity was labor. You needed trained people to run all those machines, so their focus was limited to exact run of that aforementioned machines, which was often measured in hours. This was the first time we invented leisure and pastime. Music, radio and TV were booming. We needed to switch focus to something else, hoping that our minds could focus entirely on the machines again tomorrow. And then in the 20th century, there was more things being produced that any man could ever purchase or own. Now in this moment, the new scarcity was not product or land or labor, it was knowledge. People had so many choices of what to purchase with their hard-earned money, but they didn't know what to purchase. Here's a salute to the children of the world. 
a suspended theater with a film on the joy of living. Thus, people spend most of their day-to-day -day existence trying to figure out what the best toothpaste is, what the toaster oven could do, how to spend their bonus money over holidays, and so on. And their focus needed to switch fast from one source to another to consume as many inputs in given time. I hope this sounds also familiar to you. You just wanted to buy a new vacuum cleaner, but then you got sucked into information about suction power and electricity. You started reading reviews online and watching YouTube videos. Hours after hours, if not days. Or if you're buying computer or laptop, you just endlessly watch tests that you don't really understand. Or if you're one of my friends, then you actually call me. Uh, please, my friends, if you're watching this video, don't call me. I know exactly as anybody else on Amazon. Just read the reviews there. Don't waste my time. Please don't call me to help you pick up laptops. With the arrival of internet, the primary scarcity in society is no longer information. In fact, there is now more information than any of us could know what to do with. With the booming production, scarcity was not products or ideas. No, the new scarcity in this internet age is our attention. We are on the verge of believing that all human knowledge is available under our fingerprints inside our connected devices, but this is deeply wrong. As someone who teaches mathematics at different universities for more than a decade, I noticed something alarming. There is a big gap between students who can complete really complex tests and students who cannot even grasp the problem. And it all has to do with the longevity of their focus. Selecting relevant information is fundamental to our learning and development. In the absence of attention, discovering a pattern in a pile of data is like looking for a fabled needle in a haystack. This is one of the main reasons behind the slowness of conventional artificial neural networks. They waste considerable time analyzing all possible combinations of the data provided to them instead of sorting out the information and focusing on the relevant bits. Animal experiments show that firing the warning system associated with the dopamine release can radically alter cortical maps. This is what big companies do to us. Through advertising or algorithmic selecting what we can consume, they desperately try to keep our attention. It's no secret that every company like TikTok or Netflix will use everything they know about you against you. And there are hidden psychological tricks everywhere, like the micro teaser before the actual trailer from the very beginning of this episode. Nowadays you can never be certain if something is a trick just to grab your attention. If you remember at the very beginning of this video, I wanted to do a little experiment with you and to see if your attention span is enough for this video of 13 minutes or so. And I actually really want you to write down in comments if your attention actually jumped to something else in the minute 5 or 4 or whatever and to compare that with you. But you can never be sure, maybe this was just a trick of mine to kidnap your attention for my selfish So when our beloved Homo sapiens is more like a lab rat than an actual human being, how we can take back what is left of our freedom and regain our attention and focus back? As I previously said, it is crucial for every individual to really practice control of their attention since, like my aforementioned students, a person who is able to focus longer on one specific complex task will be in the great advantage in the next world order and less prone to manipulation by outside stimuli. E. O. Wilson, the famed biologist, proposed that humans should run only half of the earth and the rest should be left alone. Imagine something similar for the attention economy. We can and should say that we want to protect human attention even if that sacrifices a portion of the profits of Apple, Google, Facebook and other large technology corporations. Ad blockers on digital devices are an interesting example of what could become a structural shift in the digital world. Are ad blockers human right? If everybody could block ads on Facebook, Google and websites, the internet would not be able to fund itself and the advertisement economy would lose massive amounts of revenue. Does that outcome negate the right? Is our attention actually our right? Do we own it? 
you and me, can we actually put a price on it? The answer is probably yes. We will regain our focus and retrieve our kidnapped attentions once we realize that our passions are taken from us so we can give our free work to the companies that run this current world. Nobody ever said that their passion is scrolling through Instagram or TikTok, yet more than a billion people do it for more than two hours a day. What we need to gain our freedom back is actually to devote ourselves to things that we love, to find the time and space. Find things that you care for. On the first day, do them for 15 minutes, really focus on it. On the next day, do it for half an hour. To reclaim right on your attention, you actually need to do what you really care for. For me, it's uh, making this movie. What it is for you? Hey, Flies Vradek again here. Thank you for sticking until the end of this episode. If you're not, please subscribe to this channel because every week I'm taking you on amazing adventures and we will try to answer more difficult questions. Upcoming is why do we love to drink coffee and why do we love memes? Until then, stay tuned and curious and don't forget, libraries still exist.